Hey everyone, my name is Kendall. I'm one of the co-founders of Proximity, which is an ecosystem fund and research and development shop that supports the new ecosystem. And we are going to talk through how you can decentralize your front end, or really any front end, using the blockchain operating system. So just to start off with the definition, you, you've probably heard a few talks about the blockchain operating system today, but just for those of you who may have missed it, uh, it's really two things. One, it's a common layer for browsing and discovering open web experiences uh, that can work with any blockchain. And maybe more simply and more directly for you developers out there, it's a tech stack to build a fully decentralized application. So what we wanted to do with the blockchain operating system is take basically the decentralization you can get by utilizing a smart contract to essentially have a distributed database and execution layer of sorts and bring that up to the rest of the stack, the front end part of the stack, so that now you can build these full stack decentralized applications. Uh, so here's a high level overview of the stack, and this looks a little bit daunting because it is a few different pieces, but we'll walk through this pretty slowly. Just to give you a little bit of an overview, at the highest level, we have essentially the, 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 what the user is interfacing with most directly. That could be uh, their wallet, like MetaMask. It could be kind of a headless wallet, like FastAuth, which you may have heard a little bit about today. Uh, or it could be kind of a specific targeted experience, like a sweat, sweat wallet. Below that, you have a, what's called a gateway. And the gateway is almost a technical term. In BOSS, it, it really means that it's an application that's running the specialized virtual machine that powers the, the BOSS technology. Below that, you have what you'll recognize as a bunch of the dApps that most users are aiming to interface with um, when they're interacting with Web3. That could be like a Uniswap, OpenSea, Lens, the sky is the limit there. Below that, you have essentially a lot of the data and the data layer and communication layer with the blockchains. That's RPC. That's some kind of layers on top of RPC, like an indexer to make you know, intera interacting with these applications easier for developers and more performant for users. And then below that, finally, you have the blockchains. And so in many cases with BOSS, you'll actually be interacting with at least two blockchains. You could just be interacting with a single one, the NIR blockchain, where you have your entire front end deployed on NIR and also have the smart contracts on NIR. Or you could have you be using the NIR blockchain for your front end and then Ethereum or another layer one or even layer two where like the smart contracts and execution layer is happening. So one of the biggest goals we had with BOSS and also one of the things we find the most exciting is that we actually think we've solved the, some of the different trade-offs that makes it so that decentralization can actually increase your distribution and vice versa. Like typically, the more decentralized your solution is, the harder it can be to get distribution. Uh, in the case of BOSS, the more distribution we can actually achieve by getting more and more different user-facing applications to integrate with BOSS, and then the flip side, getting more and more decentralized applications to, to build for BOSS, we can actually increase the distribution and increase the decentralization. Like the more of these interfaces and access points that we have for users, the greater, the greater decentralization you'll have for, uh, for users, and at the same time, more distribution for, for developers. Um, so to make it really, really simple, we'll walk through an example of deploying an app. So let's say that you're a developer and you're going to deploy a smart contract to Ethereum, something very, very typical that everyone has probably done in this room. Uh, now you're going to deploy your front end code, in this case, uh, JSX, which is just a kind of React templating language. You're going to deploy that to the near blockchain. And then most importantly, this, these two pieces are going to talk to each other. Uh, and we'll walk through exactly how that happens in the next example. Now, what's really cool is that with BOSS, we actually take it so that it, the, whoever's deploying the application, it, it doesn't just have to be uh, a single developer anymore. It can actually be a DAO. So just like how you have a DAO, say the Aave DAO, that uh, deploys the smart contracts and manages the upgrade and the lifecycle of a smart contract on the Ethereum blockchain, now that same DAO can actually manage their front end on the near blockchain. And they can do this using their familiar DAO process. So we envision a world in which um, pretty much every single smart contract and front end are actually managed by, by the same DAO. So you could have Uniswap managing their front end and their smart contracts, Aave doing the same thing, et cetera, et cetera, um, which we think is one of the most compelling parts of, of this, this process. Now, to walk you through how a user is going to interact with, uh, with, a, with a DAP and, and also walk you through some of the data flows, let's imagine that we have a user who's first going to navigate to some kind of interface that they're familiar with to interact with the blockchain. Uh, the most common one right now is going to be something like Mirror.org, uh, which you can go to today and search for a bunch of applications for several different blockchains and use them right there. 
Um, we just actually announced that Urbit is going to be running a gateway, which we're excited about for all of you kind of uh, Urbit fans out there. Uh, and then maybe something way more common is going to be MetaMask, or even like a Zapper or a Zerion, a Rainbow. Any of these just applications people are already treating as kind of their, their window into the web. That's what we call a gateway. So you first you go there. Then you probably want to select the dApp to use. Uh, so these are four examples of existing uh, apps that you can use today on the blockchain operating system. So let's say in this case that you want to use Uniswap. So you've gone to MetaMask. You've selected then Uniswap. Now what's going to happen is the front end for Uniswap is going to be loaded from near. And so basically, through an RPC request, uh, the front end is going to fetch uh, and, and retrieve the Uniswap front end source code, which is JSX. It's then going to be rendered in that specialized virtual machine that we talked about before and presented to the user. So now the user is actually viewing the Uniswap interface without actually interacting with like DNS or some kind of URL, um, which is pretty cool. So next, they're going to maybe decide to do a trade. So let's say they're going to like swap USDC for ETH. They want to buy some ETH. So then there's going to be a transaction issued to the near Ethereum blockchain uh, using an RPC request. So you have the interface that's been loaded from near that the user's like viewing the actions they can perform with. And then they're going to actually send a transaction to Ethereum. And you can imagine that Ethereum can be any blockchain. This is entirely blockchain agnostic. Right now, there's really good support for EVM blockchains, uh, but we already have a few teams who are working on Cosmos support, and, and we expect that any popular blockchain will have support for the blockchain operating system before too long. Uh, and the best part is that it's really, really easy to get started. So if you go to near.org, you can search for really any application you want. I recommend searching for a few of these, whether it's like a swap, Aave, Lido, or even just generalized bridge components. We have bridges that are supported for a few different blockchains. You can then click Fork. You can actually like see, when you first search for the application, you'll see the source code for the application. You can view that in the browser, just like you would view source code for uh, a smart contract on Etherscan. You can click Fork. Then you'll create your own copy of it, make whatever changes you want. Maybe you want to change the blockchain that Avi is pointing to, take it from Ethereum to Polygon, uh, or you want to just completely redo the entire thing. Really up to you. And then, and then you can click Save. And when you click Save, it's actually going to deploy this, these changes, these state changes to the near blockchain and also give your account complete control over this application. So if you want, here's where you could actually swap out control from like an end developer to a DAO, for instance. So this can be managed in more of like a community way. Um, and, and something you'll hear us reiterate a lot is that uh, one of the really key components of this entire thing is composability. Um, and what's really, really cool is that every single component and application that you build can actually be composed into higher order applications with other applications. And they can even pass data to each other, uh, just like you would with React. And we'll go through some code to show you how that can work. Um, so yeah, here we go. As you'll notice on this side of me, that code probably looks a lot like React, if you're familiar with React. You can see a few different named components in there. You can see uh, that you can pass props to another component. And in this case, you'll see widget as the tag there. That's actually a different application. So like that could be Aave, like Uniswap's front end passing uh, information to Aave's front end, for instance, um, which is pretty cool. So just to dive in a little bit deeper, let's look at one specific component here, this ETH balance component. So what this component is aiming to do is just something very simple. Uh, read a provider, like use, it was, so Ethers.js is included out of the box, so you can use the get provider function from Ethers.js uh, to detect an injected provider like MetaMask. Um, you can then get, the, get the, the account of the user. You can then query the blockchain using the get balance uh, function there from Ethers, and then uh, render this balance. So something very simple, should be pretty familiar to any of you who have worked with Ethers.js before, and even if you've only worked with Web3.js or something like that, pretty straightforward, uh, pretty straightforward thing to do. Um, and then similar to in React, when you uh, trigger some kind of update to state or props, it's going to re-render the component. So pretty familiar React-like lifecycle for your front end. Nothing too surprising here. Um, and then here we can actually look at uh, an example that's going to be sending a transaction to the Ethereum blockchain. So again, if you're familiar with doing this in Ethers, it's it's, it's going to be the same process. Here you'll notice that um, we're just setting the, the uh, address of the Lido contract, encoding some data in the way that you'll encode data for any Ethereum transaction, and then just calling that smart contract with that data, 
getting a result, and then updating the UI to display that result to the user. Um, here's where it gets a little more interesting. Uh, as we mentioned, you can embed these different components. And it works very similarly to how you'd be embedding components in React. So the, most, the simplest thing to do is just going to be passing props between these different components. And then as you can see here, um, what's cool is like this is a lower order component, uh, but it'll actually be aware of the higher order component that has uh, essentially like handled the Web3 connection for the user. So you only have to have the user connect their wallet one time, and then they can use a bunch of different applications. And uh, here's where you'll, you'll, you'll see that in a second, like where, where that gets really interesting. Uh, and then just finally is like a, a point to show you how easy this is. We've uh, built in styled components as well, so you can easily just use the CSS frameworks that you're familiar with um, to style your components and you know, make the, add your own design language. So you can, you can take a component that, say, like the Aave team has built, and then you can uh, like reskin that with the, with the design language of your application. So if you're, say, a, a mobile app that has you know, your own kind of design language and you want to build in some native functionality for a variety of different applications without having to do all of this work yourself and like, implement all of this logic and learn how the smart contracts work, you can actually just take the, the components that those core teams have built, reskin them using these styled components, and then you have what feels to your users like a native component, but you haven't had to re-implement any of this core logic, which should make the, that, life, that life a lot easier for, for these type of developers. All right, so now getting to the fun part and showing you how this composability really works. Uh, you may have seen this teased on social media a little bit, but on Tuesday, we are going to be announcing uh, a collaboration with Polygon and several teams in their ecosystem, many of which you might uh, recognize. These are a couple of the ones that will be launching and one that's coming a little bit later. Um, basically, we're going to be launching a fully interactive Polygon ZK EVM dashboard. Uh, so this is going to be a gateway that will be hosted by the QuickSwap team. It will have several of the top ZK EVM dApps that will have their components running on BOSS. And it's actually going to be the easiest way to use the ZK EVM ecosystem. Not only will you be able to find and discover the different applications that are available to you, you'll be able to then connect your wallet one time and use all of these in a single place. You don't have to go to any different websites or anything. And you can even view the source code for each of these just to make sure that you're comfortable with it and you know exactly what it is that you'll be interacting with. Uh, and then maybe what's, what's really exciting is that this can eventually be managed by, say, the Polygon community and continually be updated and, and evolve as more and more applications launch in their ecosystem. So just to give you a little bit of an insight into what it's going to look like, we'll reveal the URL for all of you to try it out on Tuesday. Um, this is going to be the home page up here. So as you can see, user will land. They'll immediately see the bridge on, on the right. They can interact with that just in this page. They don't have to go anywhere else. Then they can swap. They can, they can swap on QuickSwap or actually a variety of different swap applications. Then maybe they want to try out like Balancer and provide some, some, uh, some liquidity there. They'll be able to do that. Uh, so here's an example. If you were like click on QuickSwap, for instance, you'll then like see, or this is the bridge, but you'll be able to like see the, the full screen application. You haven't changed the URL or anything. This is still on, on that main gateway. Uh, and you'll also be able to then click into, say, like Aave and, um, and, and use that application. Um, so we, we, we're really excited about it because it's going to be, it, basically it's a demonstration of the power of BOSS and how we can help ecosystems, any ecosystem, decentralize their front ends and, and also create a better user experience for, for the applications. And uh, yeah, it's just been really fun to, to start working with uh, some of these other ecosystems in a more collaborative way. Um, so yeah, on Tuesday, just I'd recommend following the, the Near Protocol account. You can also follow ProximityFi, uh, which is our account, and, uh, and probably Polygon as well. And you'll be able to get the URL and then, and then try this out. And yeah, that's what I have for you guys today. So I'll let everyone go a little bit early, unless anyone has questions.